friends, I want to complete certain parts of the theory in this particular lecture where we'll understand, first of all, what is the principal value of argument, number one, okay? That will be my first focus. Then we'll discuss properties of argument. Properties of argument. Then we'll discuss properties of modulus. Mod Z. And fourth, we'll discuss cube roots of unity. Okay, and that completes the theory as far as 11th standard is concerned. For the higher examinations like IIT or uh, uh, examinations like GE, Main and all that, we need a, a more uh, detailed uh, study. But this is not uh, the part of this particular lecture. We are, I'm going to cover this much and at the end of it, we'll be very clear about what I mean by each one of these things, okay? So now, the basic problem with argument starts with the definition of angle in trigonometry itself. In trigonometry, uh, there is a diagram which represents an angle. For example, suppose this is the angle, okay? This is the angle and we call this angle as theta, okay? Unfortunately, the value of this argument theta or the value of this angle theta according to the trigonometric definition is not unique because in trigonometry what we do is this we take this as y axis we take this as x axis and then we always imagine that this is a terminal arm terminal arm and if i want to draw any angle I will imagine that this terminal arm is rotating from the initial position of x-axis in anticlockwise direction. So describing an angle is always from here to here. So it's always like this. If it is described in anticlockwise direction, then it is positive. If it is described in clockwise direction, it will be termed as negative. That is the convention. Second convention is that Suppose I want to draw an angle of 360 degrees, then 360 degrees will complete one complete rotation and it will come here. So can I draw an angle of 370 degrees? Yes, you can. But then you have to imagine that you are to make, continuing this rotation after 360 degrees, you are going ahead and you complete second rotation. That means you have completed 720 degrees and you are going ahead. And that means you are completing like this. And if you are going, in the reverse direction, then the direction will be minus, right? So the problem is now, basic problem which arises is that if you find that terminal arm is here, then how much is this angle? There is no unique answer to this question. It could be, for example, it could be 30 degrees or it could be after it has completed one rotation, it might have come here. In that case, it will be 360 plus 30 degrees or it has completed two rotations and come here. So it is 720 plus 30 degrees. In other words, it could be 360 degrees plus n times, uh, sorry, uh, 30 degrees plus n times 360 degrees. How many rotations it has taken? We have absolutely no idea. Just by looking at the position of the terminal arm, it is impossible to decide how many rotations it has already undergone, okay? So therefore, there are multiple values of the same position of the terminal arm, right? So this is a difficulty with the with the definition of argument and that is the problem and that problem can be resolved by adhering I and mean by restricting ourselves to a convention that our value of argument in complex number at least will not go beyond 180 and will not be go less than minus 180. So we decide that our angle theta will be always greater than minus 180 degrees. Remember, not equal to, and it will be less than or equal to 180 degrees, right? This is, if I measured it in degrees, if I measure it in uh, radians, then it will be minus pi is strictly less than theta, is strictly less than or equal to pi. That means, remember one thing, that minus pi can never be achieved. So 
if I want to take a point here and find out the angle of this particular vector, I'm not allowed to go like this. I should go like this and it becomes pi, correct? So pi is allowed. But in, from here, if you go here, it will be minus pi. That minus pi is not allowed, okay? So principal value is that value of angle which lies only between minus pi and plus pi. Minus pi is not allowed, pi is allowed. Minus 80 is not allowed, 180 is allowed. Okay, that is the principal value of argument. Okay, so that is why defining principal value is very important part which we will learn that right now. There are four quadrants, right? So suppose you are in this quadrant. This is the first quadrant. First quadrant. In first quadrant, this is the angle theta. So here, this will be y and this will be x. Okay. Fortunately here, both are positive. So x is positive, y is positive. Okay. So this angle theta here in the first quadrant, first quadrant theta, argument, principal value of theta will be tan inverse of mod of y by mod of x. Now, y and x are positive in the first quadrant. Therefore, it can be written as tan inverse of y upon x. Or you can keep it like this, no problem, because mod x, mod y, anyway, same in the first quadrant. Now, in the second quadrant, if you go, here is the second quadrant, then the angle can be measured from here to here, because I told you, you go clockwise direction, okay? And if you go in anticlockwise direction, you will have to cross minus pi, which is not allowed. So we are forced to go only in one direction, and that is positive direction. And now if you go this way, then this angle will be theta, and this theta will be equivalent to this angle. So in the second quadrant, second quadrant, what you're going to do is, this total angle is pi, this is pi, and minus this angle you have to take, right? So in the second quadrant, it is, pi minus theta, right? And theta is always given by this. So that is pi minus tan inverse of mod of y upon mod of x. Mod of y upon mod of x. But in this case, it is pi minus tan inverse of mod of y, but mod of x is positive, so it becomes x. But I don't want you to remember, just remember this, okay? Now, that means, suppose I go to the third quadrant now, third quadrant. Third quadrant me, I'm here now, so I'm here. But I'm not allowed to cross pi. This is like a Lakshman Rekha. He cross can be allowed, he says that we don't have to go here. So we won't come here. If we come here, then we have to come like this. And suppose the angle is like this. Then I'm going to come here, 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 and then I'll have to go back and back. That means this is negative and this is positive. So this means that this is here, 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 minus pi. So minus pi, and from here, it's going to anti-clockwise direction. So minus pi plus what? Theta. Because this is anti-clockwise direction. This and this is the same. Correct? So minus pi plus theta, which means minus pi plus tan inverse of mod of y upon mod of x, right? So that is third quadrant. Now, if I come in the fourth quadrant, fourth quadrant, very simple, I'll have to go like this. That means this is the angle theta. And this angle is simply in the clock, anti-clockwise direction, certainly minus of theta, right? So in the fourth quadrant, fourth quadrant, the principal value of argument is minus tan inverse of mod of y mod of x. Okay? So, very simple. So, let us take one second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. What is the principal value here? Principal value here, in the first case, is tan inverse of y by x. Second quadrant, it will be pi minus tan inverse of mod of y upon mod of x. In the third quadrant, the third quadrant, the value is minus pi plus tan inverse of mod of y upon mod of x. And in the fourth quadrant, 
fourth quaternion is simply minus tan inverse of mod of y upon mod of x. Now remember this, okay. So if you are given, if you are given a number and you want to find out its argument and modulus, then these are the principal value of argument and modulus, then you have to do this, okay. So principal argument of principal argument of these four numbers, which are the numbers 1 plus i, 2 plus 2i, minus 3 minus 3i, 4 minus 4i, okay. So all the four quadrants are covered, okay. So this is in the first quadrant, lies in the first quadrant. This lies in the first quadrant. Uh, sorry, this is this. I will take this as minus. So, this will be in the second quadrant. This will be in the third quadrant. Okay. And this will be in the fourth quadrant. Correct. So, now the first number. So, suppose I call it Z1. So, Z1 is 1 plus i. So, here x is 1, y is 1. So, mod z here is square root of. 1 square plus 1 square, which is equal to root of 2, okay. Now, principal argument, principal argument of z, argument of z. But it is in the first quadrant, so the definition is very simple, tan inverse of mod of y upon mod of x. So that is tan inverse of mod of 1 upon mod of 1, but both are positive, therefore it is tan inverse of 1. So which angle gives you value 1 for tan theta? It is 45 degrees. So it is pi by 4. So argument is pi by 4, sorry. Argument is pi by 4 and our modulus is 2. So it's polar form. So polar form of these complex numbers will be what? It will be root 2 multiplied by cos of pi by 4 plus i sin pi by 4, correct? So that is the first problem we have solved. So this is polar form and with the principal argument, okay? Now let us take the next one. The next one is uh, z2, let us call it z2. Z2 is what? Minus 2 plus 2i. So here x is minus 2 and y is 2. Therefore mod z is equal to square root of 2 square plus 2 square which is equal to root of 8, right? Root of 8 can be written as 2 root 2. So we got a mod. Now principal argument, principal argument. Principal argument of z will be z2 will be what? It is in the second quadrant. Second quadrant I told you. Look at this diagram. Second quadrant is here somewhere. So it will be this angle. So this angle is this pi minus this angle, right? So it is pi minus tan inverse of mod of y upon mod of x, okay? So that means it is pi minus tan inverse of tan inverse of mod of y which is 2 and mod of x which is minus 2 right so therefore this will be again pi minus tan inverse of uh, 1 correct so that will be pi minus pi by 4 3 pi by 4 correct so this is the principal value and if I want to represent it in a polar form, then z2 can be written as 2 root 2, 2 root 2 cos of uh, 3 pi by 4 plus i sine 3 pi by 4, correct? So that is a polar form of complex number, okay, z2. Is that clear? So that is how the second problem is solved. Now let us go to the third one. Okay. So 
Now the third question is Z3. Let us call it Z3. Z3 is what? Minus of 3, minus of 3i. So here x is minus 3, y is minus 3. Therefore, mod z is root of x square plus y square, which is equal to square root of minus 3 square plus minus 3 square, which is equal to square root of 9 plus 9. That means it is root of 18, which is 2 root, which is 3 root 2. Correct? So this is 3 root 2. So mod z we know. But we are in the third quadrant. Third quadrant means the angle is, uh, the vector is here. So I have to go like this first. That means I have to traverse minus pi first and then come back by the angle theta. Okay. So it means argument of z, argument of z is given by minus pi plus tan inverse of mod of y by mod of x. So which is equal to minus pi plus tan inverse of mod of y here is minus 3. So mod of minus 3 upon minus 3. So therefore again it is 1. So it is minus pi plus pi by 4. So the whole answer is minus 3 pi by 4. Did you get it? So this is for the third. Okay, we solved the third problem. Now let us go to the last one. Okay, fine. In the fourth problem, let us call it Z4. Z4 is 4 minus 4i. So here, value of real number, real value of x, Z4 is 4. And uh, imaginary value y is minus 4. Correct? So what is mod of Z? Z4, right? So mod of Z4 is uh, square root of x square plus y square, which is equal to square root of 4 square plus 4 square, which is equal to 4 root 2. Correct? So therefore, mod Z4 is 4 root 2. And since it is in the fourth quadrant, theta argument is given by minus of tan inverse of mod of y upon mod of x. Right? Because we are in the fourth, fourth quadrant. Fourth quadrant means here. So I cannot go like this because this line I'm not allowed to cross. So I'll go like this. I'm forced. But I'm now going in a clockwise direction. Therefore, so the angle will be minus. So it is theta. Fine. So it is theta is equal to minus of tan inverse of again y by x. So it is mod of y upon mod of x. But one is positive, one is negative. But when you take mod, both will turn to be positive. So it will be just one again. So it is minus pi by 4. So this angle is minus pi by 4. Here is where z4 is. So I think I made it very clear how to represent a complex number in the form of polar form. But you know, you by using principal arguments. So here z4 can be written as uh, 4 root 2, 4 root 2 multiplied by cos of minus pi by 4 plus i sine minus pi by 4. Correct? So this is the z4. So I can convert them into each other form. Okay, fine. So this is how the problems can be solved. Now I'm just going to discuss briefly the properties of argument. So properties of argument. So number one property is argument of Z1, Z2 is equal to argument of Z1 plus argument of Z2. Just imagine arguments are like a logarithm. Then argument of Z1 upon Z2. So it is argument of Z1 minus argument of Z2. Then argument of argument of Z raised to n, right? Is equal to n times argument of Z. 
10 times argument of z okay so these are the very very important properties of argument one cannot forget it okay so these are the important properties and argue properties of modulus these of modulus modulus has got this property first is very important mod z1 plus mod z2 is always less than or equal to mod z1 plus mod z2 second property mod of z1 minus z2 right is less than or equal to mod of uh, z1 minus mod of z2 i will demonstrate this simple statement by let us see it like this so look at it like this this is uh, suppose i write mod z1 just write mod z1 okay then what do i have to do z1 minus z2 and plus z2 this can be written like this or not yes very nice trick but according to the first property this is less than or equal to what mod of z1 minus z2 plus mod of z1 correct so mod of z1 sorry uh, plus mod of z2 this is 2 okay so now that means we got this mod of z1 is less than or equal to mod of z1 minus z2 plus mod of z2 now if i bring this z2 on this side then mod of z1 minus mod of z2 will be less than or equal to mod of z1 minus z2 correct but i started with mod z1 i would have started with mod z2 if i start with mod z2 then mod z2 can be written as mod of z2 minus z1 plus z1 correct so that this can be less than or equal to mod of z2 minus z1 plus mod of z1 that means mod of z2 minus mod of z1 is less than or equal to mod of z2 minus z1 look at these two statements this is number 1 this is number 2 what does that mean mod of z1 minus z2 and mod of z2 minus z1 what is the difference between them difference of a sign but these two are equal mod of z1 minus z2 is same as mod of z2 minus z1 so therefore whether it is mod of z1 minus z2 or mod of z2 minus z1 so i can take i can declare it like this that means mod of mod of mod of z1 minus z2 is less than or equal to what mod of z1 minus z2 right now that is a very important statement to make okay third statement is very simple mod of z1 into z2 is mod of z1 mod of z2 fourth statement is mod of z1 upon z2 is mod of z1 upon mod of z2 next is very interesting it says that fifth property z z bar what is z z bar it is x plus i y multiplied by x minus i y which is nothing but x square minus i square y square but i square is minus 1 right right therefore this double minus sign will reduce to what plus so it is x square plus y square which is mod z square correct so z z bar z z bar is mod z square so then sixth property i get like this what is the sixth property that 1 upon z look at it 1 upon z is z bar upon z into z z bar now so it will be what z bar upon mod z square right very interesting and very important property 1 upon z is z bar upon mod z square in particular if mod z is 1 what is mod z if mod z is 1 it is called unimodular complex number unimodular complex number so 
whenever mod z is 1, then 1 upon z becomes simply z bar. Z bar because mod z is 1. So, 1 upon z is z bar, right? Very interesting, okay? Fine. Now, properties of conjugate. Conjugates are very interesting because they go along with every property. They are always distributed over all the properties. For example, you know, z1 plus z2 bar, you know, is z1 bar plus z2 bar, very simple. z1 minus z2 bar is equal to z1 bar minus z2 bar. z1 into z2 bar is z1 bar into z2 bar. z1 upon z2 bracket bar is z1 bar upon z2 bar, right? zz bar, I have already told you, is equal to mod z square, okay? Then, suppose you take z raised to n ka bar, suppose you take z raised to n ka bar, right? Then it is mod z bracket raised to n, you know? So, it is like that. And it goes with all the other properties, you know? So, this is, uh, so this is how the arguments, uh, bars are behaving, right, are conjugates. So by using this, you can solve some very good problems, right. The solution of the problems will be given, again, or based on this, will be, based on all the theory that we have converted here, is given by this, okay. Now, let us discuss the last point, last problem, and that is cube roots of unity. Now, cube roots of unity will give you the fantastic and for example, why I'm calling it more complex numbers as the most beautiful construction made by my ever by mathematician is because of this. Now, if I ask you what is the cube root of unity, unity means one, right? So, what is one raised to one third? You know, one raised to one third is nothing but one because one cube is equal to one. So, one is equal to one raised to one third. It's obvious. So, in real numbers, the cube root of one is one only. There is no other value available at all, okay? So that is a uh, property of uh, this thing, the real numbers, right? But complex numbers are strange. If you take nth root of any number, you will find n different values. So if you take cube roots of unity, you will find three different values. And how to get those three different values? Let us find that, okay? That is a very interesting proposition. So let us do that. So if I ask you what is, uh, I have to solve which equation? Cube root of unity means I have to solve what? Z cube, if Z cube is equal to 1, what is Z? You know, that Z is obviously cube root of what? Unity, okay? If Z cube is equal to 1, then what is Z? Okay, that is what I want to find out. Now each one of them will be called cube root of unity and I prove that there are two values, uh, three values of cube roots of unity. So that means so this equation can be reduced to what? Z cube minus 1 is equal to 0. Very simple, right? Now you know A cube minus B cube formula. A cube minus B cube formula. It is A minus B multiplied by A square plus AB plus B square. Right? So let us use that. So first of all, this will be z minus 1 in one bracket. Then it will be what? z square plus z plus 1 equal to 0. Correct? Okay? Now you know that the product of two uh, brackets is 0. That means either one of them is 0 or both are 0. Right? So either z minus 1 is 0 or z square plus z plus 1 is 0. Correct? Okay? So that means either z is 1 or let us find out this is a quadratic equation. So what are the roots of this quadratic? z is equal to, let us use the formula minus b plus or minus under root b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. Correct? So b where, now in this case, in this case, a coefficient of z square is 1, b coefficient of z is 1, c is also 1, okay? Now put it in this formula, right? 
So Z is equal to what? Minus B, that is minus 1, okay? Plus or minus under root B square, 1 square, minus 4 A and C, both are 1, right? Divided by 2 into 1, correct? So that means this gives you what? Minus 1 plus or minus under root minus 3 upon 2. Now that is very interesting. Root of minus 3, you know it can be written as i into root 3. So therefore, z is equal to minus 1 plus or minus i root 3 divided by 2. Or if you want to write real part and imaginary part separately, then plus or minus root 3 by 2. These are the complex cube roots of unity. Which are the three roots? First root is 1. Second root is minus half plus i root 3 by 2 and third root is minus half minus i root 3 by 2. Generally, this is denoted by a letter called omega. This is denoted by, uh, this is actually you can see this is omega bar because it's a conjugate here or I can prove that this is equal to omega square. So therefore, the three roots of unity are denoted by one omega and omega square. And I can show you that square of this is this. So let us find out, right? So what is the square of omega? What is the square of omega? That is minus half plus i root 3 by 2 ka square kya hai? I am just using the formula a plus b bracket square. That is a square, right? Plus a square plus 2ab that is minus half i i root 3 by 2 2ab plus b square which is i square into root 3 by 2 ka square fine so what is this this is 1 by 4 what is this this 2 2 gets cancelled and you get what i minus i root 3 by 2 and what do you get i square is what minus 1 and root 3 by 2 square is what? 3 by 4. So what is that? Half. So this total will be what? Minus half minus i root 3 by 2. But well, that is nothing but <laughs> the value of this third root. So that is omega square, right? So this is omega square. This is omega. This is 1. So three cube roots of unity are 1, omega, and omega square. Okay? So 1 omega omega square, one of the most important properties of these cube roots of unity is 1 plus omega plus omega square has to be what? 0. You can verify that very easily. Okay. That's all. So we'll stop there and then in the next lecture, we'll solve some very interesting problems. And uh, before I com conclude, I just want you to think about this particular problem and write the solutions of this problem in my on my uh, this thing in the notes or you can write it down on a paper scan it and send it to my email address i'll give you my email address find greatest and least value of values of of mod of z1 plus z2 mod of z1 plus z2 where z1 is 24 plus 7i and mod of z2 is 6 This is a challenging problem. I want you to, and not very difficult, but you will have to make some efforts to solve this problem. And if you can solve it and send the solutions, I will declare the names of all the students who have written me, the given me the correct solution. And you can write it on this particular email address, pmja 
k-a-t-d-a-r at gmail.com gmail.com so on the youtube you can always find out my uh, my own channel called prakash zakadar okay you can just write professor prakash zakadar and you will get all my lectures provided you are using what the laptic innovations this is the company which is producing these videos so under the uh, under the auspices of uh, this uh, particular company i am using this okay so call me if you want